Hugh, what time are you coming home tonight? I was wondering if I should start making dinner now or not. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I don't need any dinner tonight. Just have dinner by yourself. Huh? You told me yesterday that you felt like having steak tonight? So I bought some on the way home. I'm sorry. I'll steak some other time. You can have it all this time. You've been putting on a lot of weight recently anyway. Eating my portion should be no problem for you. <laughs> Ugh, you don't have to say it like that. But you promised me you'd be home early tonight, didn't you? I told you, there's a lot of things I need to talk with you about. Well, I got invited out for drinks again, so there's nothing I could do about that. You know I can't turn them down, it'd look rude. But you always go out drinking with them. Can't you turn them down just one time? You promised me. Stop making a big deal out of this. I'm the one making all the money, so stop telling me what I can and can't do. I work my butt off at work. It's tiring. I deserve to unwind a little when I'm finished. So if I want to go out for a drink or two after work, don't get on my case about it. You think I'm not working too? I'm the one looking after your father all day. I have to go over there almost every day. Don't act like you're so busy. My mom messaged me, you know? She said you left early the other day and she had to do everything herself. That's because your dad was throwing things at me. He wouldn't listen to me no matter what I said. He was hysterical. I figured if I stayed there, it would cause more problems than it would solve. I think what you meant to say is you abandoned your job. Fact is, you were supposed to help my mom with him and you didn't. What was I supposed to do? Your dad can't get out of bed and he has Alzheimer's. That day, he thought I was a thief who had snuck into his house. When he saw me go into his room, he started screaming and throwing things at me from his bed. How am I supposed to help feed him and look after him when he thinks I'm trying to kill him? I know it sucks that you have to go over to help him every day, but it's better than having my parents live with us, isn't it? I don't know why you can't accept that. It's not my fault. I'm not trained to take care of people like that. Your dad needs professional care. I think you need to put your dad in a nursing home or hire a professional to help your mom out. I can't take care of him for you anymore. I definitely can't do it by myself. Well, my mom does it by herself when you're not there, doesn't she? Stop complaining. You help out like six hours a day. She does it by herself the other 18. So stop saying it's impossible. You think she's really taking care of him? She's out running around all the time with her friends. She's hardly ever there. And I think she goes out again after he goes to sleep around seven. Why would you say that? My mom wouldn't do anything like that. Whatever. Anyway, I don't think I can do this anymore. It's things like what happened the other day with his Alzheimer's. And the fact that your mom usually isn't there helping me out. If your dad remembers who I am, it's not so bad. But he's getting worse. He hardly ever recognizes me anymore. That's why I wanted you to come home on time tonight. I want to talk to you about all of this. I was so happy that you finally promised me some time together tonight to talk. And now, instead of that, you're off drinking with your co-workers again. Okay, okay, I get it. We'll talk about this all when I get home, I promise. You always say that, but we never do. I stay up waiting for you, and you come home drunk in the middle of the night and immediately fall asleep. I wanted you to come home at a decent time so we could talk about this over dinner. Because I know if we wait till after dinner, you'll just say you're too busy or too tired to talk about anything, won't you? Next time I will do that, I promise. Okay? We'll talk about it next time. So we're done talking about it for now, right? Ugh, why did I even marry you? You won't even talk to me when I'm having problems. God, you're being really persistent today, aren't you? And if you couldn't tell, that's my polite way of saying you're being annoying. That's why I don't want to talk to you right now. You're hysterical. Maybe when you calm down, I'll consider it. But until then... I'm upset because you broke your promise to me again. And you never listen to anything I say. Oh, okay, fine. I'll listen right now. Tell me. But make it short. 
Despite everything I do for your father, your mom tells me I'm useless. And she's always on my back. Because we've been married for three years and I haven't given her a grandchild yet. Ah, uh, my mom's old. She's stuck in her ways. That's just how she is. That's how things were when she was young. Don't worry about it. I'm sure she doesn't mean any ill will by any of it. That's your solution? What do you want me to do? And whose fault do you think it is that I'm not pregnant? You trying to blame that on me? Well, obviously. You come home late every night and go to sleep right away. You don't even talk to me, let alone spend any quality time with me. The only thing I'm here for is to cook you dinner and sleep next to you. Not with you. Fine, ugh. You really want me to tell you why that is? You're not attractive anymore. What? How do I put this? As a woman, I think you're finished. I think if you look at the women around you, you'll see what I mean. You're the only one who's let themselves go. <laughs> Oh, if that's how you really feel, why did you even marry me? Well, don't get me wrong, I, I still like you. You're great around the house. You're a good cook. And you help take care of my dad. I don't look at you so much as a woman, but more of just, you know, a wife. And I know you're faithful. <laughs> if that's all I am to you, maybe we should get a divorce, huh? Aw, oh, come on. That's not what we're talking about here. I'm not doing anything wrong for you to divorce me. And you don't have any other place to go anyway. You're an only child. Both your parents have died. I'm all that you've got. Besides, all this is happening because you've let yourself go. It's not my fault. You need to take a look at yourself before you start placing the blame on others. I see. So this is all my fault. Well, I mean, all you have to do is go on a diet. Maybe go to a beauty salon once in a while. If you did that, I'm sure I'd change my mind about you. Look, I gotta go. We'll talk later. Just wait. We're not done talking about this. Oh, maybe you're not, but you're out of time. If you want to talk more, we'll have to do it at home. And don't try to contact me anymore tonight. If you do, I'll just turn off my phone. Answer your phone! What are you doing? Sorry, my phone was in my purse on vibrate. I didn't notice you called. You had it on vibrate? Why? What do you mean, why? I was at work. After we put your dad in a nursing home, I've been working full-time, haven't I? I'm on my way home now, though. Oh. That's right. I'm still not used to the changes. Did you want something? Yeah, I wanted to tell you my mom just died. Huh? They think she got scared and hit the accelerator instead of the brake. She had a telephone pole. Apparently, she was going really fast when she hit it. Luckily, she didn't hit anyone else, but... Ah, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Really? <laughs> okay. What? Why are you laughing? I'm not joking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. My family's planning on having a visitation the day after tomorrow. There's a lot of things we gotta get done before then. I've never done this before. I don't know what to do. I need your help. What are you talking about? It sounds like a pain in my butt. I'm not helping. Are you kidding me? What's gotten into you recently? Stop acting like an idiot. My mom just died. Why are you laughing? Have you lost your mind? It's no skin off my back if your mom died. In fact, if she's dead, I'd say that's a load off my back. If the accident didn't involve anyone else or cause trouble for anyone, we're all lucky. Huh? Did you really just say that to me? Yeah, I did. Do you have no heart? You're horrible. When it comes to me and anything to do with you or your family, I honestly don't care. What are you talking about? Did you really hate taking care of my dad that much? We did exactly what you said, and we put my dad in a nursing home. Yeah, but you only agreed to it by forcing me to pay the nursing home fees. Well, obviously. You're the one who didn't want to look after him. You're the one with no heart. Forcing me to look after your bedridden father with Alzheimer's? He didn't even know who I was half the time. 
He treated me like crap and verbally abused me. That's what you made me look after every day. I felt sorry for him being in that state, not being able to even get up and walk, but... Him throwing things at me, yelling at me, and thinking I was breaking into his house almost every day? Ah, so what? He had Alzheimer's. It's not his fault. He didn't know what he was doing. Don't take it so personally. I'm not qualified to take care of someone like that. I'm not even a regular nurse. Why would you make me do that? He's not even my father. It wasn't like you were asking me to help out a regular elderly person. This was completely different. And your mom never helped. She made me do everything when she was there. And most of the time, she wasn't there. She was out running around with her friends, doing God knows what. You forced all of that on me. Well, it's not like you had a job. Figured it wouldn't hurt you to help out my mom a few hours a day. Think about what she had to deal with all the time. And you're complaining from just a few hours? You tried changing a grown man's diaper when he thinks you broke into his house and are trying to kill him. And your mom never looked after him. She was out all day. She didn't get back till late, and your dad would go to sleep right after she got home. And I think she'd go out again after I left and her husband was asleep. And she never changed his diaper before I got there. I always had to do it. Even if he went in the morning, she would just leave it there until I showed up and would make me change it. She didn't even help roll him over when I wasn't there. His bed sores were terrible. What? When she was there with me, all she did was complain about me not giving her a grandchild yet. She told me that she didn't want me as her daughter-in-law anymore. But she said if I divorced you, it would be a waste, because you'd have to give me half of all your stuff. So, she said that the best thing I could do for her, or you, would be to die in an accident. But it looks like she died in an accident, instead of me. I thought that was fitting. That's why I laughed. I'm sorry. My mom said that? She hated me. She made me do all her housework, too. And she made me let her borrow all my nice bags and jewelry. And she never gave them back. Did you not notice all my stuff was disappearing? Why did you tell me this was going on? If you would have told me, I'd have done something about it. What? I tried to tell you so many times. When I told you your mom was calling me useless and was never helping me out, you didn't do anything about it. You just said she didn't mean any ill will by it and passed it off like it was no big deal, didn't you? Well, that was... And you. You never once went to look after your own father, did you? You didn't want to be bothered with it. So you just figured you'd make me do it, didn't you? You're all talk. You never do anything. I knew I'd be wasting my time if I tried talking to you about it. But we're husband and wife. We're supposed to talk about things. Yeah, that's right. We're supposed to. And do you recall how many times I tried to talk to you and you just ignored me? Oh, I don't remember how many times exactly, but... If I didn't talk to you, it was just probably because the timing was bad. You refused to talk to me like a hundred times about this. But I was patient. I thought I was doing the right thing as your wife by thinking of your feelings. And waiting until you weren't busy or too tired. But about three months ago, my heart finally broke. That's why I've been preparing for divorce this whole time. Divorce? What? Yeah, divorce. I realized I can't live like this anymore. I can't be with you. Hold on a second here. You can't just come out and tell me you're divorcing me. It's too sudden. It's not sudden. It's been a long time coming. I mean, I know you mentioned the word divorce a while ago, but... But you haven't said anything about it for a long time now, have you? I told you it was because I was getting ready for the divorce. I didn't have a job. If I got divorced then, I wouldn't have been able to support myself. And because you were making me look after your dad the whole time, I couldn't look for a job either. But you told me if I wanted your father to go to a nursing home, I'd have to pay for it myself? You knew I'd have to get a job if I did that, didn't you? That's why I agreed, so I could look for a job. That's why you agreed to put my dad in a home? You're terrible. 
Oh, you think so? I think your father is much happier and much better off being in a nursing home with professional care 24-7. They'll change his diaper whenever he needs it and roll him over when he needs it. And they'll make sure he gets a good meal on time three times a day. You think that's terrible. So, about this divorce. What's going to happen with my dad's nursing home fees? It costs like $1,500 a month. That's not my problem. That'll have nothing to do with me once we get divorced. What? I only put him in there because you agreed to pay for it. If I was your wife, I might feel obligated to pay. But since I'm divorcing you, you can forget about that. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding. You're gonna ruin everything here. Well, you're the one who ruined my life. You weren't there for me when I needed you. And you forced me to look after your father when you knew I didn't want to. You put all the responsibility on me and tried to make me look stupid when I couldn't handle it. Look, you can't divorce me over this. I've never cheated on you, and I've never hit you. Until I do either of those things, you're going to stay married to me, and you're going to do as I say. Instead of wasting all your time trying to make that happen, you should just move on now. Your mom died, right? You're going to be getting your inheritance now. Plus her life insurance, right? And I know your mom told me she introduced you to another woman last month. Instead of trying to keep me, why don't you try out this younger woman? Start a new life with all your money. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm going to get an inheritance. Because Dad's not a sound mind to have anything left to him. That's right. You'll get everything. So what's the problem? Well, what about you? What happens if I divorce you? You're going to get half of this, too. That's why you're doing this. Uh, I don't want any of your inheritance. Just give me what's in our accounts now. And I won't touch the house, your car, or any money you get from insurance or inheritance. So if I divorce you, you only want what's in our accounts now? You swear you won't touch this inheritance? That's right. And we barely have any savings anyway, you know that. So there's nothing you need to worry about. I see. Well, if those are the terms, let's do this. You get the money in our accounts now and nothing else. Get the papers drawn up and I'll sign them. I'm done with you. You've served your purpose. <laughs> if I've got lots of money, I'll have no trouble finding a beautiful woman. Try not to be jealous of me when you're in some crappy apartment somewhere just barely scraping by. <laughs> Hey, I'm not screwing around. Message me back. Don't ignore me. You really screwed me here. Um, I blocked your number. How are you contacting me right now? Did you get a new cell phone just to message me? You blocked me, so I had no choice. Don't try blocking me again. If you do, I'll keep buying new phones just to harass you. You must have a lot of time on your hands, huh? No. I'm so busy, my head is practically spinning. Then stop messaging me. We're divorced. You're nothing to me anymore. That's only because you tricked me. You swindled me. That's why I'm messaging you. I swindled you? You said I'd be getting inheritance and life insurance for my mom in the accident. I remember her telling me she had life insurance. She did, didn't she? She had insurance but she also had piles of debt I didn't know about. The only thing I inherited was her debts. There was nothing left from the life insurance after all her debts were paid off. I thought I'd be up money after all this, but with all her debts and the cost of the funeral, I'm in the hole. But that's not my fault now, is it? You got her life insurance and everything she had, just like I said you would. You didn't tell me she had debts. I signed the divorce papers and gave you our savings, specifically so you wouldn't get the life insurance. But I ended up getting nothing from her but a huge funeral bill, and you got all my savings. If I knew I'd be losing money after all this, I wouldn't have divorced you. At least not until after half the debt was yours, too. I guess I'm lucky, then. Good thing you're stupid and didn't check into your mom's finances first. Get back here right now. There's no way I can afford to keep my dad in a nursing home now. Well, you should still have enough salary left over each month to pay for your dad's nursing home bills. 
I've got my own house payments to make. I'll have almost nothing left for myself after the bills are paid. How am I supposed to live like this? Hmm? Aw, oh, what do you mean, hmm? This is all your fault. You took all my money when you divorced me. I wish I'd never agreed to give you the money in our accounts. Look, I was entitled to half of everything. Don't forget that. Be thankful I only took the money in the accounts instead of the house or your car. And all of this is your fault. You're the reason we got divorced. You really are a terrible person, aren't you? You laugh when your husband's mother dies in a car accident. You ship my father off to a nursing home. And when I'm dealing with all of that together, you go and divorce me. Say whatever you want. Everything you're saying is true. Part of me thinks I should be having a drink tonight and toasting to your current situation. Aw, oh, why would you say that? When I laughed back when your mother died, it wasn't out of hatred. I just thought it was ironic because of what she said to me. You're the one I truly hated. You married me just to use me. After we got married, I never felt loved by you anymore. Just used. We were married for three years. Feelings change after you get married. It's normal. It's normal to make your wife look after your mentally ill father-in-law every day? And it's normal for your mother-in-law to treat you like garbage, even when you're looking after her husband? Well, I'm sorry if that isn't what I pictured married life to be. It's not uncommon. Elderly people need to be looked after sometimes. You should have expected it. Really? Well, ask around at your office and see how many other wives are doing what you made me do. Tell everyone what you made me do, and then see if they think I'm wrong for wanting to divorce you. I'm not going to bother everyone by asking them that. Maybe I would have put up with all that. If you'd have been there to eat dinner with me, talk to me, listen to me, or at least be there when I needed you. If you would have done those basic things for me, I might not have hated looking after your father for you so much. But you never did any of those things for me, did you? And even worse, you never once thanked me for doing it for you. Well, that's... And when I did tell you that your mom was treating me terribly and never helping with her own husband, you took your mom's side and started criticizing me for talking bad about her, didn't you? You took her side, and you were never there to take my side. Nobody was there to take my side. And you wanted me to keep living like that? I don't think anyone would want to keep living like that. No, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I pushed you so far. And I never thought my mom would do things like that either. After seeing all the debt she racked up, I realized you were right when you said she was out running around with her friends all day. It's too late to apologize to me. No, don't say that. Let's work this out. I know we can. We can't. I can't. The thought of living with you again makes me sick to my stomach. I swear I'll make time for you, and I won't do anything to stress you out ever again. I mean, you'll still have to work full-time to pay for my dad's nursing home bills, but other than that, you won't have to take care of him ever again. And my mom's not around anymore to be mean to you, right? So everything should be fine. It'll be easy to make everything work. It's not your decision to make. You just want me to pay for your dad's nursing home bills, don't you? You still don't get it, do you? What I hated the most was you. That's why I divorced you. I said I'm sorry, honest. I see that I was wrong, I'll change. I can't do everything by myself. So no way we can get remarried. I know you can't do it yourself. You can't even see what the real problem was here. You still think I'm to blame for all of this? You need to take a look at yourself before you start placing the blame on others. That's what I said to you, isn't it? Okay, that's good. Get even with me. I'll take whatever you dish out. Get it out of your system. Then, when it's all out of your system, you can come back to me. I need you. I'm nothing without you. Please help me. I thought you said I've served my purpose and you're done with me. And when I needed help, you ignored me. You're the one who has no heart. Don't ever try contacting me again. I have nothing left to say to you.
After that, I went out and got a new cell phone and a new number, and I never heard from Hugh again. I talked to one of Hugh's neighbors, though. They told me that Hugh was really struggling with money. To continue paying for his dad's nursing home bills, he had to sell his house and move to a tiny apartment. At least he decided to keep his father in a nursing home, so his dad will be able to continue to get the care that he needs. Part of me kind of wanted Hugh to try to take care of his dad, just so he understood how difficult it was. But I guess working as hard as he is and barely being able to scrape by is just as difficult of a task. I, on the other hand, am enjoying my new job, and I love the apartment I moved into. I've even got a roommate that's really fun to be around, and she helps me with all the bills. I'm saving lots of money, and I'm trying to forget the three years of my life I wasted with Hugh. I still feel a little regret for laughing when his mom died. I guess I went a little too far there. But I've learned my lesson, and honestly, I don't feel that that was me. I don't think I was mentally stable at that time. I was filled with so much hate and despair, I just couldn't take it anymore. But like I said, I've learned from that experience. And I'll never let myself get in that type of situation again. From now on, I'm going to surround myself with people I like and people who care about me. I'm going to enjoy my life.